June 7, what does the ADP data tell us? What do the ADP rankings look like right now at the very beginning of June? Who is a steal? Who's getting overdrafted? I'm gonna quickly go over like maybe rounds one through five and just kind of tell you what stands out. But we're gonna definitely do a series on ADP every single week. I'll attack it from different angles like QB ADP data, uh, wide receiver ADP data, round one ADP data. Let's take a look at round three, et cetera, et cetera. McCaffrey, nothing to talk about here other than he's 28 years old, very high risk of injury, very high risk of disappointing yourself by passing on him. It's equally as risky to take him as to, to doubt him. So you just kind of like take your shots at him at 1.1. If you got to draft at 1.1, even on underdog or not on underdog, some of you can't play underdog. If you can, make sure you get to the link that's in the description of the video and underdog will give you a 50% match on your first deposit. Um, all the way up to 250 bucks by using that link or use code Smitty. But we're sitting here looking at this data and it's more important data than any other mock draft data because these are paying clients. Pay, every single person is paying five, 10, 15, 20 bucks to play in a draft. So they're taking it seriously. Mock draft data, it's a ghost town these days. This is the most reliable data out there. And I'm gonna do a weekly show around it. That's how important it is. But we look at this and we say, you get the 1.1, you take McCaffrey. All your 1.1 drafts, take McCaffrey. That's where you're going to take your, your gamble, so to speak, and also not gamble passing on him. But, you know, you'll get one out of what? Five, six, seven, one out of 10 drafts where you get the 1.1. So you'll you'll have one or two shares of him. And, and you shouldn't oversaturate your teams with McCaffrey because he's 28 years old with an injury history and, and gets overworked by Shanahan. It's a disaster waiting to happen at some point. But you can't, you can't pass on him at 1.1. Lamb chops, Tyree Kill, Jamar Chase. N nothing here standing out yet. JJ, kind of a deal, but for good reason. He's got JJ McCarthy throwing him the ball. Oh, wait, no, he doesn't. Sam Darnold is not going to relinquish the job, according to, to certain reports that, that indicate that they're taking their time with McCarthy. And I just don't like that situation. St. Brown at 6.1, which is good value. We're starting to get to the point where all of a sudden we get to number seven and eight overall, and we've got Hall and Bijan and they're worthy of going in the one, two, three, four overall territory. So you start to get value for the first time on the ADP board that I think screams, I can double my value. And that might not sound crazy to go, oh yeah, player eight overall plays like player four overall or player two overall, big deal. It's a huge deal. When you talk about having only eight picks already drafted, that bump in going from eight to like two is as significant as a player in round five climbing to round three. Puka Nakua, look, he's deserving of this draft selection, but you are taking him at a ceiling, but he can he can certainly earn that. So he's not in a void, but he doesn't scream, oh my God, like Bijan and Brees Hall, this could be number two overall. Um, AJ Brown feels like we're climbing to his ceiling, but he could certainly like Puka earn that, so I don't hate it. Garrett Wilson, look, he could play as good as Jamar Chase or JJ. So we're starting to see probably the most value at wide receiver right here. I mean, I love Amon Ra. He can deliver, but this is about, you know, wide receiver four or five is where I think he'll, he could be on his great year. And then six, seven, eight, you know, on a, on a down year where he maybe misses a game or two or three games or four games, whatever. I love Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson screams, I can climb like half of this ADP, you know, territory if I want to. And, and I love that. Jameer Gibbs, Get out of here. This is probably the best value on the board yet. Jameer Gibbs could be number one overall. Jameer Gibbs could easily be top two, top three. So this is where you're saying I'm getting the most bang for my buck. Marvin Harrison Jr., a lot of you might not like that he's going at 13, 14, 15, but honestly, I think this is his floor. <laughs> I, think he, I think he gets you 12 to 13 touchdowns. We'll call it 10 to 13 touchdowns as a floor. We'll call it 1,200, 1,100 yards as a, as a floor and 80 receptions, 85 receptions as a floor. I think he could get 100 receptions. He could get 1,300 yards. He could get 14 touchdowns. I mean, he really has the ability to score as high as St. Brown. So it, do I think there's room for him to increase from this value? Absolutely. freaking -lutely, I just told you. But do I want him climbing any higher no this does feel like the the great territory get him as your 2.1 anywhere as your second drafted player in in marvin harrison jr is a home run not not an early pick that you're hoping gets your value back you start taking that eight nine ten then you're doing kind
kind of what you're doing with with Puka, which isn't bad, but you're taking him probably in his ceiling territory. Or, you know, uh, Tyreek Hill, he can earn this, but you're taking him in his ceiling territory. So that's pretty good for, for MHJ, actually. I think people are going to act like it's not good, but I think it is good. Same thing for London. You know, London could be wide receiver five. So to get him in the 14 to 15 overall territory, I, I don't hate it. I think some people are uncomfortable that he's climbed so quickly, but... I'm not worried about it. It doesn't make me feel like you're not going to get your value back. I think his floor is right around this territory if he stays healthy all year. Barkley, JT, these are good values. These could be top five running backs. These could be, at the end of the day, round one running backs in hindsight. So I don't mind this. I, I like Barkley more than JT, but they both are pretty pretty damn even here. I think Barkley's going to have a phenomenal year. We have never seen Barkley in a good environment. We've never seen Barkley behind a good offensive line. He could crush from this ADP. Not loving Alave and Ayuk in round two, especially in like the 17, 18 range. I love the players, but I don't know that I love necessarily the situations right now at this cost of entry. Now, if Chris Alave finds a, an elite hidden gem in Rattler, then all of a sudden this can, this can be something. I like Alave. I really do. He's a moon man last year. I just want him as my third drafted player, not, not my my middle of the second round, second drafted player. Same with Ayuk. Uh, Adams, look, he's he's older. Ziggy, how old is Devontae Adams? You son of a... Devontae Adams is 31 years old and was born on December 24th, 1992. Okay, so he turns um, 32 in December. That's not necessarily a, a good thing. And getting him in the 19 range, we're not even talking at the bookend, 2-3 turn we're talking about a little bit deeper no thank you i like him but no thank you debo give me debo injury prone maybe but best yak yardage player in the entire national football league yes and i, I love debo uh so debo's like my emergency round two wide receiver if i don't get who i want if the board doesn't fall a certain way and we've talked about this a lot on the patreon and if anybody hasn't joined the patreon yet that's where everybody is before the show after the show this is where our community lives on patreon 10 live chats on patreon 10 bucks a month and the link is in the description of the video i'll pin it in the comments as well but this is a, a unbelievable place where you can talk with not just random people live 24 7 on the on the 10 live chats and it, it looks just like this where like you pull up the app and all 10 chats are right there and then you get exclusive content as well and the first 200 people uh limited time uh, first 200 people get into the 242 man league and the winners of each of those leagues uh, there'll be 11 leagues 22 people in each league uh, the winners of each league go into the 2025 dynasty startup draft that we draft live on the channel so make sure you get the patreon link in the description again 10 bucks a month gets you all this engagement with with people you love the the regulars the diehards of the chat but in the patreon we've been talking about who smitty do you like at that two three turn at wide receiver we've been talking about this topic for a while because it gets really weird at the two three turn wide receiver wise you're reaching or you're you're just not liking the player do you go a different direction even if you went McCaffrey at one overall and now you're at the two three turn back to back do you force wide receiver do you take nico do you take mike evans do you take waddle and I, my, my answer my go-to answer is debo's my guy and it's not for everybody but i absolutely love debo i'll take debo in another like a running back or a debo in a in a josh allen you know I'll, I'll definitely i won't force wide receiver here and i've even gone robust rb in a best ball draft mania where i get mccaffrey and then i go uh, I go HN and Kyron. I go HN and Derrick Henry. And I'm fine with that. I, I'm very I'm very okay with that crafty style of play. Scrappy. Go get my wide receivers, land those wide receivers, and have a, a conglomerate. Um, but that's my last go to wide receiver. Not like a Nico in round two. Sorry. I just don't. I like Nico. I don't like him in round two. That's hard though. That's a that's a tall order. That expectation level is massive. Mike Evans. Ziggy, how old is Mike Evans? I mean, Mike Evans is 30 years, old. Th 30 years old. Ziggy, volume 10. We can't hear you. Speak up. Ziggy, volume 10. How old is Mike Williams? This guy doesn't. I don't know that one. He's still. Ziggy, volume 10. Ziggy, how old is Mike Evans? Did I say Mike Williams? Mike Evans is 30 years old and was born on August 21st, 1990. Ziggy off. So he turns uh, 31 in. August here. I, I'm I, I'm not saying he can't do it again, but at second round value, I'm not really loving that. Waddle, 
He's the second option on his team. I'm not, and and A Chan's there. Like, there's so much, you know, volume to be divvied up. And I'm not saying the Miami Dolphins attack doesn't throw enough, but I don't, I don't really love this value. So I'm going, like I said, I'll back to back A Chan and Kyron all day long (laughs) at this 24 and 25 turn. Good God, there's not a better beginning to a draft than getting Kyron and A Chan back to back. Now, I will say this if you end up seeing this a lot and you expect to have this kind of like i don't love my wide receivers maybe you plan on drafting hn and kyron and you take a a wide receiver at the top like lamb and you say yeah mccaffrey's there but i'm gonna go lamb chopper tyreek hill and then when i get down to the two three turn uh which is right here i'm gonna go hn and kyron there's really no better way to start a draft than to go cd lamb HN and Kyron. Uh, Diggs, no thank you in the third round. DJ Moore, especially the top. Uh, a lot of mouths to feed. He, he he voided his contract down to one year, which I don't know how that is advantageous to him because now the offense is going to be like, let's game plan around who's here next year. Let's not build everything around somebody that might not be here. I don't know what he's thinking. Diggs, I don't like it. DJ Moore, crowded wide receiver room. It's not the same DJ Moore as last year, not to mention you don't know the rapport between Caleb and DJ Moore or if the Bears will even develop Caleb properly. So no thank you. Neighbors is a tough one to crack because we like him. Everybody loves him. We, you you, you know he's going to be an elite talent. He looks so freaking good in practice, but it is hard to draft him as a second drafted player. I don't mind a third drafted player. I really don't. We talked about this. I kind of go a little bit back and forth as to where in the third round, but I don't, I don't mind this. I, I don't. I don't. He could get a thousand yards, but four or five touchdowns. I don't think he'll live in the red zone enough. All of his touchdowns got to be created on breakaway, you know, receptions, which he can do four or five, six of those maybe. Um, that they won't live in the red zone. This is going to be an awful offense, and they're going to rotate between their quarterbacks. He's going to play with at least two quarterbacks as he's learning the offense and trying to build rapport. I just don't know that I like him as a second drafted player. I will sign off easily as a third drafted player. The later you get him, the more comfortable I am, though. You've just been. But this will evolve the neighbor's ADP. Uh, Devontae Smith, he's the second option for his team. Now you debate between do you want a number one neighbor's for his offense getting all the the main targets but maybe a lot of inconsistent passes thrown his way or do you want the guy that's going to be on an amazing offense that lives in the red zone that has proven to be a top 10 wide receiver before he was wide receiver eight or nine i believe two years ago Devontae smith can easily be uh, every bit more reliable than neighbors um as a rookie uh, laporta look I, I don't mind this value at all 30 i prefer him at 4.1 and beyond but like y- you know you're sitting here in a draft and you're like give me Laporta is my late third drafted player. Sure, I'm fine with that. Let's scroll on down. Uh, DK Metcalf honestly is a good third rounder. I don't, I don't hate that at all. Henry's a steal in round three. Bakes in all the risk you could possibly bake into the situation. Um, I don't like Pittman Jr. as my third drafted player. I'm not hating on Pittman Jr. I'm not calling him bad. I'm not saying he's going to bust, but I do not like him as my third drafted player i'd rather him in the fourth round cooper cup uh i hate that he's climbing into round three i I love cooper cup in four it baked in every single uh piece of risk that existed right because he's 30 years old last year and struggles to stay healthy he's 31 this year and can he stay healthy Uh, we don't know we don't know we don't know if he's the same guy i imagine he is i mean you got these other wide receivers that are a little bit older than him that we're still kind of trusting you know, look at Mike Evans, look at look at Adams, look at Diggs. He's right there. So if we're trusting those guys to some degree, why aren't we trusting Cup? Well, we are. I mean, on average, he's going in the third round, so the fantasy community is. But falling around four was great. Four was a home run. Here I'm 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 okay with it in a couple leagues, but I was very okay with it in round four. And if you end up seeing it based on where you draft ESPN, Yahoo, you'll see guys fall different territories, right? This is underdog, so it's gonna be underdog specific. But I do think this is more, like I said earlier, accurate, even if it is best ball versus your non-best ball draft, maybe because these are paying clients, everybody's paying money, they're gonna finish the draft out. Just because you have a mock draft you know, ranking or data from a platform where you actually are going to do your league doesn't mean that's more accurate because how many computer controlled teams are drafting? How bad is that data? I'd rather just go with the 100% accurate data that might be a little bit different format. I think you could get him around four, though. If you get him around four on another platform, home run. You get him at three, I still don't mind it. Look, in the third round here, 
Henry, you know, obviously is, is in the mix for this. This is probably the best value in the third round. Josh Allen, you could say, wait on a quarterback, wait on a quarterback. But at the end of the day, this could be the number one and has been the number one overall scorer in fantasy football. And you're getting him in round three. I don't care how deep the QB pool is. This guy's outscoring everybody. He's worth the overpay, not to mention whenever someone says, wait on a quarterback, wait on a quarterback. It's an apples for apples conversation. Your quarterback in round three, Josh Allen versus what? Who are you going? Zay Flowers? Who are you going? Uh, Tank Dell, Travis Kelsey, ETN, pick a guy I like, uh, whoever you want. Let's just say Tank Dell. We like Tank Dell. I'm going to crush anybody taking Josh Allen and let's say a wide receiver uh, in the territory where you're getting your quarterback. Let's call it. Let's call it, a, a, I don't know, Keon Coleman, if, if you will, and, and cuff that too, or a, a JSN or a Christian Watson, or you could even say somebody like a, a Jaden Reed. My Jaden Reed and Josh Allen will absolutely crush your late quarterback and T. Higgins. Your late quarterback, where were we on the ADP ranking here? Your late quarterback and, and even like a, a, a Diggs or a DJ Moore or anybody. But we were at Zay Flowers, let's be fair. Zay Flowers or below. So I'm taking Josh Allen here. Zay Flowers or below. Any of those guys. My my Jaden Reed and Josh Allen will crush anybody's combo that they get. And if you go RB, I mean the RB's that late. Najee, Najee and Josh Allen. Jonathan Brooks and, and, and Josh Allen. Zamir White and Josh Allen will crush your whatever you take here. Let's call it even ETN and later quarterback. Or in the very worst case scenario, it's dead even. So I don't want to hear this is bad value. I don't want to hear waiting on a quarterback is better. That is something you're, you're hearing from somebody, regurgitating it from somebody. But I am the biggest advocate of defending. I'm the biggest defender of early quarterback you will find in the fantasy football industry. I guarantee you. Everything I just said about Josh Allen hurts. Probably the two biggest steals of round three are Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts. Travis Kelsey, good uh, good value. Tank Dell, love this value. Um, oh, so we breached round number four. Okay, so we're Josh Allen at the end of round three. Zay Flower is the very end or top, very end to top of round four. Jalen Hurts is is four point one. <laughs> Jalen Hurts is four point one. I think I got something for that. I think I got I got something for that. Excuse me, Jalen. Reporter Randy here from the Take a Lap Times. Do you know you're currently a third to fourth rounder in fantasy drafts? <laughs> third to fourth rounder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty funny, Jalen. We're getting you in the in the in the uh, third to fourth round turn, but but traditionally in the fourth round, that's a steal. Kelsey in round four, anywhere in round four is great. Tank Dell anywhere in round four is better cost of entry than Diggs or Nico. I'll, I don't care what anybody says. Uh, Travis Etienne, that's a great fourth round pick. Lamar. Uh, T. Higgins, I, I just don't love. I don't hate it, but I don't love it. I'm not telling you he's going to bust here, but I don't love it. Pickens, I like Pickens at like five or six. I don't know. How, he's climbing so high. I love him. He was a mood man last year. We love Pickens, but I don't know. Uh, I love this Trey McBride value in round four, sure. Josh Jacobs, give me a break. Josh Jacobs is one of the bigger steals now in round four, right? Yeah. Yeah. This, guy could be a top, this guy could be easily a top five running back. In fantasy football 2024, Pacheco, I don't mind Pacheco here. He had gone earlier, and he runs so hard, and KC's very inconsistent from year to year what they do with their RB. This is the first year they will be consistent, hopefully, right? But, it, you know, this is a good territory, I, I guess, for him. I don't hate that. I didn't like his earlier ADP when he was a little higher. Mahomes at 5.1. <laughs> <laughs> I think we may have found our number one overall value on the ADP board. Smitty, there's so many late quarterbacks. I don't care. I don't care. 5.1. What are, what's wrong with people? This is the biggest deal in fantasy. We're going to end right here in this like fifth round territory. This is one of the biggest deals in all of fantasy. I'm not going to say Josh Allen and Jalen Hurts aren't as valuable from that territory. And when you say, well, you just told me Josh Allen I shouldn't pass on. So which is it? it, it look, it's, it's, it's everything. Diversify. 
Take Josh Allen when you can. When he gets sniped from you, then Mahomes is waiting there for you. You're not always going to get what you want. So, yeah, you're going to take your stab at Jalen Hurts at 4.1 every single time at the cost of maybe seeing uh, Mahomes later going, damn, I could have had him too. But you're fine. And when Hurts gets sniped and and Josh Young gets sniped, this guy's waiting for you at 5.1. Even if you take him mid-round four, I'm totally fine with that. He crushes, as does Kincaid in round uh, uh, five, which is ridiculous. Um, Mark Andrews uh, is good. McLaurin, I wish he was a little later, but I'm fine with this value. I think he really has a resurgence with JD5. Keenan Allen, no thank you. Older player, crowded wide receiver room. Uh, James Cook, I, I don't trust Buffalo to use the running back consistently. You might like this. I don't hate you for liking this, but don't hate me for not liking it, okay? Stroud, good value. Anthony Richardson, good value. These are guys creeping into the territory of of, of like almost, you know, almost or sometimes six round territory. Uh, and then I'll end it on Hollywood with Brown and Jaden Reed in the anywhere near the 6.1 end of five top of round six absolutely love it that, that, let's stop there for today we'll 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 circle back and we'll do like six round and beyond on the next show and we'll make this a weekly thing appreciate every single one of you uh don't forget to get on over to my patreon and join that link is in the 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 comments pinned and in the description of the video and again it's 10 live chats it's exclusive content it's the most simple app in the world but in a good way as you can see when the app is opened on patreon and you're you're subscribed you'll see my 10 live chats and then a home button that will take you to the content where you can comment and engage as well there and it's 10 bucks a month cancel any time and then again the the first 200 hurry up first 200 get into the 240 man league and then the winners of each of those leagues go into the the fantasy football show official dynasty 2025 startup draft that goes live on this channel all these drafts are drafted live on the channel all 242 people will be in 11 different leagues drafting live on a saturday draft marathon you will not want to miss being a part of the community being a part of the drafts and, and getting this exclusive content and don't forget to get on over to underdog that link is also in the description Code Smitty, they'll match your first deposit up to 50% up to, uh, or they'll match your deposit at 50% up to 250 bucks. You deposit 500, they give you 250. You deposit the minimum of, of minimum of 10 bucks, they give you five dollars. So uh, get on over to Underdog Fantasy promo code Smitty link in description. See you for the next ADP show. And don't forget, I'm live Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern, every single damn Monday through Friday, every single. Monday through Friday. And I'm also live when news breaks. I'm also live most midnights. I'm live more than anybody you know, and you know it. Deuces.